gender reaffirmation surgery or gender reassignment surgery as it was called in the past was for gender dysphoria which also was called as gender identity disorder looking at this subject uh, with a larger view when we look at transgender individuals who want to change their individuality which is their gender into the desired gender that they belong to that is their innate internal understanding which as individuals in society we may not have understood so well and therefore today's awareness for all transgender individuals for all gender dysphoria individuals in this country and beyond it is important to understand that the subject has arrived the subject is no more hidden the subject since it was evolving over the last few decades and the government of india promulgating giving them rights to their lives uh, looking at uh, individuals like us who in reconstructive urology having taken the subject over last 15 years have been able to transform lives attempting to hand hold the journey of gender dysphoria and take them to the next level it is important for us to put this awareness to the society while i uh, seek help in terms of helping our trans uh, individuals in the country both male to female and female to male to realize their dream and to take it forward to the next level of achievement uh, which is holding them back in terms of uh, being entrapped in a body that they don't belong to they are the ones who always feel that they belong to a different body which was not given to them at birth and their entire aspect is just not for sex the entire aspect is coming out of entrapment of the body that they are living with i think it needs a huge amount of understanding today and i think the society has already taken it forward to the next level since the government of india on 26th of november 2019 brought about this very important act of their rights and looking at them bringing them close to individual uh, individuals in society and giving them the status of the third gender three days later i got a chance to speak on at the tedx platform on the topic called dysphoria to euphoria and over the last 15 years having been involved in a uh, significant reconstructive work in transgender individuals of both the primary people who come to us from various parts of the country where we do gender reaffirmation surgery of both male to female by a vaginoplasty and a female to male by either a metoidioplasty or by a phalloplasty we seek to help individuals and both the society as well as medical personnel to understand that this subject is not out of bounds we all need to know it trans individuals are as normal individuals as you and me working in our workplaces across the country and they perform and excel as good as you and i are so there's no difference between anyway anybody around and that gladly the law and the government of india took it forward to the next level and today we come uh, low and behold to a level from where we can take their journey to best possible levels and bring them out of entrapment when i do a male to female gender reaffirmation surgery over the last 15 years we've evolved techniques to come to a level where people feel great about the kind of both aesthetic and functional results we bring in i'm looking at both at functional as well as aesthetic results that means we create those organs which are capable enough to be felt good about oneself which is what they look forward to that means external appearance of a labia majora a labia minora a clitoris which is a sensate organ from the glans penis with its neurovascular bundles and creating a vagina which has got its depth with limitations um amidst human beings that it could give that amount of depth of a vagina the penile inversion vaginoplasty the flap that we create from the penile skin and take it inward as we remove the corporal bodies of the unwanted organ called the shaft of the penis and the two bilateral testes the hormones that you're fighting against while you're taking a female hormone as a male to female trans woman we create individuals who are uh, completely a persona amongst themselves they are the ones who were aiming to be what they want to be so when they come out of operation theater they feel liberated they feel good about it so for all trans women who want to undergo a vaginoplasty as a male to female it's a single stage surgery it's a single step surgery i still take between 3 and 1/2 to 5 and 1/2 hours but i don't look at the watch when we operate we look at doing a reconstructive work where there's a lot of ablation happening getting into the perineum very early in the morning closing everything outpatient departments and other surgeries and taking it forward to the next level by removing those organs which are unwanted basically the bilateral testes are removed we remove the corporal bodies very carefully we preserve the neurovascular bundles which actually give blood supply to the glands the dorsal part of it is actually created as a clitoris that's again going to be kept very strategically in a location from where onwards we will look at how it gets the sensations and the kind of stimulus which is required of strategically in that location when we look at this aspect we go to the other aspect altogether as that they are aiming to be partners to uh, cisgender males or to trans males as required 
And it's a great feeling when you take them in this journey and take it forward. Many of them have actually stood across here and taken pictures and felt very good in the journey. I know that we are creating organs which are irreversible, removing organs which are almost irreversible. It's a healing process of the body in the background of your positivity as a trans individual. And many of you, you do wonders. You also need to know the realization that a human body on this side could create a human body on that side, give you an individuality of the feeling coming out of entrapment by the surgical approaches we take. And it really works wonders. Of the umpteen individuals from various cities and countries who have kept silent, having undergone this treatment around, I salute each of you having undergone this, having had the faith in the transgender work that we started having trained in Serbia and taking it forward in the last 15 years as an individual, as a urologist, as a reconstructive urologist in the country. And I seek more and more people who deserve to be taken forward, rightly to be done here. Individuals used to go to Thailand, who used to spend three to five times more money, but I don't look at the money aspect of it. I look at the aesthetic aspect and functional aspect. I remember all these surgeries can come with a small amount of complications. So it's all about healing process. The way you want to heal probably may not heal that way. Your healing powers may be different. Though a teacher gave you all the best, probably you did not pass the exam or pass with the lesser marks than you aimed for, not the gold medal, because we do our best on the operating table. We look at planning these surgeries very thoroughly. We're looking at spending more hours on the operating table and taking it to the next level in gender dysphoria on a male to female single stage surgery. We warned ourselves when I took up robotics approximately 10 years ago, where both on one side doing the robotic cancer surgeries in terms of radical prostatectomy, radical nephrectomies, uh, taking it forward to the next level of radical cystectomies and all kinds of reconstructions like robotic pyeloplasty, robotic ureterostomy, robotic ureteric reimplants and augmentation cystoplasties. We took up this subject of robotic sigmoid vaginoplasty with a lot of challenge. We look forward to individuals seeking help and looking at minimal invasive surgery where the dexterity and the kind of finesse we could put into this reconstruction deep in the pelvis by bringing a sigmoid or an ileal segment, positioning it on its blood supply and bringing it out a vagina, which is called as a robotic sigmoid vaginoplasty for individuals who seek a sigmoid vagina. A sigmoid vaginoplasty in the past was rated as a possibly secondary surgery a surgery which could cause mucus discharge and things which are probably living in myth of a situation. Things are busted right now. We don't live in those myths. Robotic sigmoid meningoplasty may soon become a state of art, a possible requirement for many individuals who have a capacious organ in the pelvis uh, coming out of the introitus, sutured outside and has got a capacity, has got a, um, a girth, all those which you aim for as a trans woman. So robotic sigmoid meningoplasty has come to stay. That we continue to perform this here and I look at that as a very important surgery, uh, not only for trans individuals, but also for neymar syndrome, which I get to see from many practitioners of the art, many people from society who have heard the awareness on this channel and many gynecologists who know that the subject requires in-depth towards maturation, towards finale for a uh, woman who would gradually be maturing enough and to be able to be capable enough as a woman. So all trans women not necessarily undergo this for sexual Purpose, but yes, they need to have a functional organ. They need to have an organ where they can come out of entrapment and take it forward. There was a, a small revision where some patients used to request for a zero depth of vaginoplasty, but that's not such a common in vogue around because we create a vagina rather than creating a zero depth. Looking at the female to male, which defies profile and which requires a multi-stage surgery, apart from the ablative procedure of mastectomy or removal of both the breasts by our colleagues, and removal of the uterus and the ovaries by again our colleagues by minimally invasive technique. We created a team out here where I look forward to creating the phallus or the phalloplasty. So on one side are female to male trans men who look forward to a penetrative coitus and they look at phallus, which could be a sensate organ when created. Or it could be a metoidoplasty, which is a single stage surgery, where from the hormonally enlarged clitoris, we look forward to lending them between th anything between four to seven centimeters, sometimes putting an implant, which is a new implant from Zephyr, and then also giving testicular implants and thus giving them a sensate organ, which is capable enough to be able to stand and void in a male toilet or a neutral toilet. At the same time, feel a lot of capability that I am now a male having come out of the entrapment of a female name and a female kind of a recognition, which I was given to. So gender is what one feels and sex is what one sees. The organs that you see is not the organs that you probably believe is yours. And therefore, this entire dysphoria of feeling that I am at unease and probably I am not complete is where a gender dysphoria individuals wants to come out of that entrapment. 
at the Coquilevin Hospital. Since I started this entire aspect of care on trans individuals in 2008-9, we opened up a clinic, which I, in my uh, various presentations across the country and the world, as a WPATH representative to the country, uh, have taken this forward to the next level of making individuals understand that we have taken a new set of phalloplasty at attitudes right now to help individuals who want phalloplasty. So the phalloplasty and the abdominal phalloplasty is an important technique. The abdominal phalloplasty is for individuals who are lean and thin, who don't have a lot of abdominal girth, who actually get a sensate penis from not a microvascular free uh, flap transfer, but already a flap transfer from the abdominal wall. That cosmetically, you are not bereft of various kinds of ha things happening on your arms, and thighs around, but you have got a flap which sacrifices and gives us entry abdominal wall that I now use a tissue expander and bring it out. So phalloplasty of the kind that you see around is waiting to happen where we do a stage phalloplasty, obviously. The first stage is obviously creating the entire uh, chassis or the phallus which has got sensation, which has got the capability, the penoscrotal angle, the penopubic angle, and obviously have a lot of sensations in the organ. When we do that, we aesthetically close and keep it all functional for the urethra to be created. We already got few of the urethras created after the inflation device, after the expanders, and these urethras are inbuilt from the very flap. The rest of the urethra would happen when we create a close the vagina and do a vaginectomy and bring the anterior vaginal wall uh, flap and do the parts uh, urethra creation around. The entire aspect of urethra always requires a calibration. It's a man-made urethra. It really defies profile to create a 20 centimeter urethra on the phallus and later on give individuals a phallus which has got a penile prosthesis. So prosthesis could again be of many kinds, the malleables and the inflatables of the kind that has come from Zephyr as a single inflatable or the malleables which have used as Shah's malleables in the country and Zephyr's malleables which has come in which has got a fixation device there. All I want to tell you in a short presentation is at the Kokila Ben Hospital since I started the department um, and looked at this important aspect of care, I think we have brought in a huge amount of change for many transgender individuals. We as a team uh, take this subject uh, with a lot of respect to our gender dysphoria colleagues. We know that as the government opened up arms around and we understand that people are capable enough today, they reach uh, places around. People consult me online from all over the world. I've got at least four consults from various parts of the world in the next two days on very important aspect and request on my email, which is sanjaypdr at gmail.com, where they have actually looked at and requested for a consult and take it forward to the next level. So for me, trans men and trans women are as normal individuals as you and I. It's just that they were born into an entrapment, into the brain wiring, which is different from what you and I think and the society accepted. In the TED talk that I gave in, I did uh, root those cause and looked at it forward in terms of uh, taking this flagship of helping individuals get through the transformation by a gender reaffirmation surgery in a male to female or a female to male. It feels proud to be able to do those reconstructions also in cisgender males, where as I said, we create vaginoplasty for women who have got an absent vagina called the MRK syndrome. And we do the same thing as a phalloplasty for people who have got micropenis, whose penis are small, whose penis have got injured, have undergone an amputation or an injury or a burn or a trauma. And therefore, the micropenis can be given a new penis altogether and thereafter an implant. People who have had circumcision injuries, who have had burn injuries in their penis, who had amputation of uh, partial or total amputation of penis as a result of uh, penile cancer, all have their chances and scopes of probably getting a phalloplasty again. So men who have got absent phallus or microphallus and women who have got similar kind of issues can be completely thoroughly treated around. So I think we look into this uh, subject with a lot of care, a lot of understanding, a lot of empathy. It is important to be a partner to an individual across the table as a doctor-patient relationship, which is coming back so strongly again. I think we look at positives. We look at positives in the relationship to help our individuals, either giving a paracetamol or probably doing a small surgery or doing a transitional transformation surgery as strong as this, where you reform an individuality in an individual who could either be cisgender with absent organs or damaged or injured organs or people who want to change their organs altogether because they understand the brain wiring is focused into that where we need to bring the body to the mind. The mind is completely focused. That's what I did give a talk on this TEDx which is called as a dysphoria to euphoria. So friends, gender reaffirmation surgery for gender dysphoria is not a new subject. It's a subject which has stayed the test of time. I speak on behalf of many colleagues across the country and the world who do this surgery and understand that, that they're capable enough that they do it. Let's not uh, 
give a chance to experiments on this. We know that some individuals do fail these surgeries around because these are very, very complex surgeries and complex undertakings. They cannot be done in a week, month or a year of practice. They have to be polished practice with a lot of faith from the society and from our trans colleagues. And all. I pray for those who have done very well, pray for the families, those who have not done so well, those who deserve to be getting well from various sectors in the country and for our own patients who have done very well, salute that. You had a faith. We look forward to helping out those whose journey need to be reaffirmed in any kind of a complication that could happen even at our hands in the early days and with the hands of our colleagues who have attempted around. So loss of phallus, loss of urethra, the urethroplasty, which becomes a challenge for me in the country and people come for urethroplasty on this with multiple aspects of care required. I look forward to helping a trans individual to gain his right and to bring him back to the society and make you feel completely out of entrapment that it is. So when we look at this important aspect of the motto that we follow at Kokila in hospital, we say every life matters. And that's the motto we follow here. If the, every life matters to all individuals who come as patients. And for every life matters for all those individuals who are gender dysphoria, because they are not able to speak up all the time. Now it's time to speak up and get your treatment sorted out. Be it metodioplasty as a single stage female to male surgery or a phalloplasty multi-stage surgery or a single stage male to female. I think it's important to empower them and then take them forward to the next level.